Tiffany.com. I am Sarah Herring and I am about to welcome Bryn Kenny. I think this is such a crazy spot the poker world has been in for the last week or so, maybe more. And I have to admit for my own self, I think I was really naive in a lot of spaces. Um, I think I really had a lot that I didn't understand about maybe poker, the way the poker scene works, the way that the high roller poker world is. Um, but one thing I do for sure know about poker is <laughs> that whether it's the Twitter space or uh, any media space in general, people can be incredibly cruel. And um, I, I guess I wanted to just come out in the beginning of this and just at least say that this is just kind of a tough spot to be in. Um, this is a, a tough interview to do. There's a lot of hard things to discuss. And I think probably no matter what, uh, there's gonna be a lot of negative feedback. And I, I also think it's only fair to come out in the beginning and just say that I've been friends with Bryn for about 10 years probably. And the whole time though that I've been in this poker space, I've encountered lots of weird and dramatic situations and lots of things that came and went and always at the core of uh, who I am. I, I really want to be honest and I want to get to what the truth is. And, and I hope that, that Bryn shares those sentiments. I think that he does. And so we're just going to dig in here, folks. And I know I'm just going to piss some people off, but I'm going to do the best I can here. And, um, and I know that Bryn will as well. So let's just welcome on the man of the hour, Bryn Kenny. Hello, always nice to see you, Sarah. Uh, maybe not the most pleasant circumstances this week, but you know, life gives you what it gives you and all you can do is manage that and not hope for something different. I am so with you. And I, you know, I reached out to you last week just to say that I hope that you're okay because I just think this is, um, you know, I think we all know that once things start getting spiraling out of control, especially in social media, uh, a, a lot of things get can get missed or overlooked or people come. I've seen it happen lots of times. People come with pitchforks and we've got to, we've got to go, <laughs> go for someone. Someone's got to, got to, um, lay on the sword, if you will. Um, but this situation is really unique because as it's all evolved, it didn't really start with you, but it feels like this is where the most, um, traction has ended up is talking about you and your stables and your life. And so here we are. And I think I was trying to, to decide what would be the best way to sort of dig into all the things that we need to cover. And I thought for a lot of people who are already, you know, deep in the poker space and in the high roller community, they're already going to understand a lot of what we're talking about. But I think there's a lot of people who are interested or who are paying attention to what's happening, who maybe don't have as clear of an idea of how some things work. So I wanted to talk to you first of all, just about what it means to have say a stable of horses and what that looks like for people who do have this, um, where you find these people, how people tend to run their stables, how you ran your stable. Um, I just think this is kind of a, a mysterious world for a lot of people that maybe we need to start in um, breaking that down first. Yeah, perfect. So throughout my whole poker career, I mean, I started playing poker in with friends at 15 years old and from 18 was really just loved, loved everything about poker and the experience. And I started to have success at an early age and I guess I, I really like, I like action. I like helping people. So I start throughout my whole poker career, I've backed hundreds, if not a thousand or over a thousand people at different times. And usually, and how that works is, is the backer would put up all of the money for that person to play the events that, that they're, that you agree that they're able to play. And then there would be some type of split based on the winnings of what they made after all investments were paid to the backer. 
So it's actually, I thought it was kind of interesting because for me, when I was very new to the poker community and I didn't actually even know who you were yet, one of the first things that someone said to me about you, you came in with like a very large stack, I think of cash at the time and were sort of dishing it out to people in the tournaments going through. And one of the first things anyone ever said to me about you was, oh, he has uh, a lot of guys. He has a lot of action. He runs a large stable, if you will. And this was was probably eight or 10, yeah, 10, maybe 12 years ago, actually now. Um, and this was my first introduction to that whole world. And so one of the things that I know from lots of high rollers now is that, you know, when people have a stable, they, it's their business, right? So they choose to run it however they want and different people do it different ways. But tell me a little bit about how you would choose the people that you would invest in and then what that would look like for them maybe years ago. And then also now, how have, how have you managed this stable? Well, just like being someone that's like completely entrenched in the poker community, me traveling to tournaments all around the world, you would wind up meeting people that you played with online or just meeting people live for the first time. And then like someone told you that it was known that I would have a big stable, other people would know that in the poker community. So Sometimes it would be friends of mine at the time that I was backing would recommend another friend of theirs to me. And when I was young, I was really very careless about it all. I just had a lot of money coming to me. I started having a lot of success at an, at an early age and was, yeah, I was really acting careless and putting a lot of people into maybe events that you know wasn't necessarily a good business decision for me. And then at the same time, you wind up getting in just rough spots with people because the thing about backing is when someone gets down a lot of money, it, it's all about their mental composure and their ability to, to accept what happened and to move forward in a positive or a better way, which is really difficult when everything is crashing down on you, especially at an earlier age when poker was just at the start of its popularity uh, someone would be used to, they would win a tournament maybe and get a sensation from that. And they would maybe kind of like a drug would be hooked on that winning sensation a little bit. So when you go through long periods of losing, it can really crush your morale and get you into that mindset of losing and kind of expecting that that happens. So I've actually, I've went, I mean, there's countless interviews that are, that's me talking about all the times that I went broke, like through my poker career. Um, almost, almost none of those reasons were for me personally playing poker. I kind of have always won throughout my whole career. And it's that like backing, let's call it an addiction even, or action addiction that I had for a while that, you know, plummeted the first multiple big million plus bankrolls that I had. And I would say throughout those years, you know, in the experience, you learn, you get smarter, you grow. So it turns into doing it with a lot of people and maybe being too careless and not being on top of people so much and their emotions and trying to guide them in the right way. Because anyone that I'm close to or do business with, I try to Know, give them the tools or assistance to better their their poker game or their life and as time goes on you get more and more selective of the people that you do business with uh, people that are you want to be surrounded in life by positive people you want to you know have people that are that are interested in their own personal growth because Poker is a game that's always constantly evolving and with that mental strain and the strain of also others just knowing your finances and if you're doing well, there can be a lot of things that come crashing on you when things go poor. And at the same time, I was just, I was giving a lot of my energy in the early days of my career, staking just too many people and I wasn't allowing myself to focus enough on my own personal growth. And as, as I got older, I realized how important that is to incorporate more balance into your life. And 
more growth and to give yourself that space to grow. Whereas in the earlier years, I was really just 100% in poker. Everything was me playing poker, me thinking about poker, me traveling for poker, and then throwing on the layer of staking people and really exponentially increasing your variance to something crazy where we have so much variance just ourselves playing. But then if you're backing 20, 30 people, you know, that's a whole different story of if you want that to be successful, what you have to put into that. Okay, so clearly you're getting older, wanting to um, surround yourself with with good people and invest in quality people. And yet we have this Martin Zamani who comes out and makes lots of allegations and was a part of your stable, I, I think, or you can say that yes. whether he was or not. And um, so how did this relationship start? How did it sour? Why do you think he's decided to come out now and make all of these claims? Um, well, that relation, so he contacted me and he had done business with, um, with another person that I, I happened to do business to at the time, uh, but that, that didn't really go well. So the way that he presented himself to me at first was really him being a victim in this whole relationship that he had. And, you know, me being a person that really, I would say that I'm very sensitive and very caring and try to be, try to help others who might have had unfortunate scenarios. So uh, he didn't really, he, he didn't really have any friends that were connected to anyone that I staked. And at that time, I might have slipped a little bit and started staking a little more people than I would really like doing. And um, yeah, so that's, I mean, that's the way that I was introduced to him. And then I started backing him in some tournaments on GG poker, a few on party poker and poker stars, a few live events like I would do with other people. Okay. And so then the transition for a horse for you would be, okay, I put him in a few things. Maybe we see how things go. And then, you know, he said he had to go to Mexico. He needed to train with people that you trusted. Uh, is all this kind of standard for, for how your stable would run? If you bring someone into the fold, then this is what it's going to look like. Yeah. Well, like going to Mexico, that's because, you know, to legally play online, you've got to play outside of the country. So going to Mexico, was like a personal choice of his because he wanted to play in the tournaments that were happening online at the time right then and at the same time you know by me getting wiser and smarter along the process i wasn't really putting in any money or time or energy into people that had no interest to improve their poker game or to improve their life uh, martin's kind of martin's a person that you know, through our conversations, he, he's someone who told me that he's actually never been happy in life. And someone like me, the way that I am, it, it makes me feel actually really sad for someone to, to really say that if, if that's their truth, because I feel like someone that's so fortunate, that's had such a, a blessed, happy existence. And really something that I pride myself on is trying to bring some happiness or assistance to people that may not have had that same fortunate upbringing and existence that I have. So, you know, recommending someone to eat healthy or, you know, here's a yoga instructor that, you know, I'm happy to pay for for you. Here's a masseuse that I'm happy to pay for you. You know, here's an expert in this field that, you know, I'll here, this, you should meet this person. And, you know, then, then it's all up to an adult and a person to make decisions if they want to go ahead with meeting this person or doing whatever it is that's being recommended to them. And I, I would say I'm also someone that steers very far away of trying to put, I mean, at least my attempt, I know that I have a strong personality, so sometimes things can come across a different way, but consciously myself, I really try to steer away from putting pressure on 
anyone of what I feel like that they should do or that they have to do, as opposed to I would try to show them some tools that have helped me to, to be better, to improve my poker game, to improve my life. And then it's up to them to determine or to decide if those work for them. While at the same time, if you have someone that you're staking that is, you know, losing at the time, continuously being negative, and people close to you are, you know, recommending that you stay far away from this person, you know, I would say that I'm someone who's who gives people many chances, and I always I try to see the best in everyone and try to bring out the best in everyone. And you know, sometimes that can be a detriment to me, but at the same time, that's something that I'm happy with of myself and wouldn't want to change anything. But so obviously things with Martin at some point got pretty salty. Um, and it's interesting because I, at least I think that what a lot of people in the poker community want to understand and something that Doug asked that, Martin didn't appear to want to disclose is why, why, why are you, why is he saying this now? Why is he coming out now? Um, and I think there's some speculation that maybe he, maybe there was like a blackmail element or maybe um, I, I saw also that he tweeted that he, it's one of the things he feels great about doing. Um, so I guess I'm wanting to know from your perspective, did you see this kind of thing coming and what happened between you two that led to this clear rift? Um, so for my, the way that uh, the business closed with me and him is uh, he was actually in like 350,000 in makeup and was just continuously losing and having a negative attitude. And at the same time, uh, at that point, I think he, owed me about somewhere in the 100 to 150,000 on the side from just things apart from the stake. And, you know, he still owes me um, and just decided that he wasn't going to pay me for that. So, uh, the, but another, like you're saying about that blackmail element. So on this Mexico trip that he talks about very much, uh, he actually spoke with one of my close friends and told them that he was going to blackmail me. So this is like one of the reasons why business closed like right after that, because, you know, you've got, I've got, here's someone that I'm trying to help and I'm trying to steer in the right path. And he, in his mind, he wants to, you know, find dirt on me to blackmail me and extort me really. And I think that what happened is in the past one and a half years, he's been trying desperately to find any proof of, these allegations that he's claiming, which really have, have no proof at all. I mean, not proof, they have no truth to them at all. Uh, coming out with saying things like me using real-time assistance or me recommending this to my horses to use. I've never looked at real-time assistance in my life. I've never used any programs when playing any or, or at all. I've never seen these programs. I play my own style of poker and I always have. And I think if you were to speak with anyone who's played high stakes with me, they would tell you that clearly I don't have a game or a style that incorporates any, any of this while at the same time accusing me of things like having my horses collude in satellites the real funny thing about that is, is the names that he's listed, if you actually check up like their stats online, they're all huge losers, like on GG. Like, it's not like there's not money that, you know, these guys won that even you could see. These guys are clear big losers. And the one thing I, to, to see, I was, I was in, the, in the start with GG, helping them to grow their site, to grow their guarantees, to run bigger tournaments. So did I have horses that would start these satellites? Absolutely, but in no way. And, you know, it could be, it's such, so easily verified by, let's say the 20 people that I've been doing business with since I started dealing with GG that there's not a single correspondence of me or an ask or of anything of me asking anyone to do anything uh, wrong in any way. For me, I, would see, I see myself as the person who loves poker more than anyone in the world. And what I love about poker 
is its pure form. And, you know, I think that poker is meant to be a mind versus mind game. And that's what makes it the best game in the world. And at the same time, I hold myself to my own type of moral standards where I would say I look at myself in the mirror continuously and try to be the per be the best person that I possibly can. So, you know, allegations like uh, me having my horses ghost other players on GG are completely false also. And all of the people that I've staked on GG would all say that actually I've went out of my way to say that it's something that I, that I don't want anyone to do, that I have no interest in staking anyone if it's not going to be themselves playing and I don't care if you're in a big in a huge spot for a lot of money which I have some close some friends of mine who I staked for much smaller stakes that wound up playing for huge money and they played that tournament completely themselves and you know it's I, I would never get involved in any type of business that wasn't clean and an important thing to remember too is you know, I've, I've been in the poker spotlight for the past 17 years or so, maybe completely in the poker spotlight for the past 15 years. And through it, all the people that know and all the people in the community, I would say that if not the most, I'm one of the most respected people in the industry for my word, for following in my word. Uh, also, me being someone that's continuously been on a roller coaster in life, like financially. So there's a lot of people that just, you know, had a successful career and have never really been tested. Like I've been from rich to broke to negative millions back and forth all over again. And my word, everything has been tested throughout those years. And anyone that I've been in business with that has maybe loan me money when I wound up in a spot like that. As soon as I got the money, it went directly to them. No one ever had to ask me anything. And that's always been the most important thing to me by far is my word and operating in the cleanest way possible because, you know, it's, it's something that's so important to me, like even, even in my career, you know, and, and to say that, um, you know, doing something untold or some type of cheating in these small stake satellites, it's effectively saying that, okay, here I'm gambling for millions of dollars and doing business for millions of dollars, but, and my reputation, my word is so important and has been so strong for, for forever. And, you know, here I am stealing thousands of dollars. It, it, it doesn't make any sense at all for a person who cares about these things. And, their word and reputation is so important to them. Like, you know, I'll, I'll just give, I, and I don't, I don't care to parade myself about the things that I do well and for others in this life. I let my actions speak for themselves and I don't care for any recognition for, for helping others or for the good that I do. But in the start of 2019, I found myself in a spot where I had my first ever losing year in 2018. I was in about three and a half million dollars in makeup and I owed about another million dollars on the side. So the person, so I, I started the deal uh, with the person who was backing me at the end of 2017, after I had a really big year and kind of had a bad run from the start of that backing until the start of 2019 and like that year and a quarter or so. So in the start of 2019, that person says to me, Hey, um, I think that this three and a half million that you're down, like the number is too big. And, you know, I'm willing just to, to wipe the number clean and to start our stake back at zero. And this is someone that I had no money at the time. I had no, it's not like I had assets or property. I had nothing. I, I needed to win five and a half million dollars just to get even at that point. And before the person could get the words out of their mouth, I told them that there's no chance that I would accept that because for me, like a deal and my word is just so much, so much deeper than I think maybe others, uh, others feel theirs. And it's always been so important to me. So for me, it was when we came into this agreement in 2017, it was for high stakes games. So in my mind, it's very, it's very easy to lose three and a half million when the tournaments that you're playing are hundred thousand dollar buy-in, $250,000 buy-in. You know, maybe half a million dollars uh, on the stake and a million dollar buy-in or so. 
So it's not like a, it's, it's a bunch of big tournaments that added up right there. But at the same time, when I got into that deal, I see myself as someone that's strong and that can get through that adversity. And because it's like that deal and every deal that I make is like a bond for me and my word and what I believe in. So if I were to accept like washing that money, it's almost like to me, it would mean that what happened was too insurmountable for me and I couldn't get through it and it was too much and too difficult. Whereas on the contrary, before that, uh, con before that conversation ended, I say, hey, I said, hey, you know, don't worry, I'm in a great mental state and I'm gonna be number one in the world again this year. Okay, so this I think leads into what we do need to cover the Lauren Roberts stuff for sure. But before that, I kind of want to finish some of the things that Zamani brought up and just specifically then address those, such as what do you say to the accusation that you could see his screen? And I do think Doug, Doug like pointed out a few holes in his theory, but I just want you to address it. Could you see? I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely crazy. Okay. I mean, it's, it's one of the craziest things that I've ever heard in my life and has absolutely zero truth to it. Okay. So then I feel like we also have to address this um, image of your screen, which contains team viewer and the Nord VPN. I think lots of people have at least VPN on their computer. Can you explain team viewer? Is there a good reason for you to have these things on and running? Well, like team viewer just ha like uh, when you have it downloaded, it's just something that like pops up when you turn on your screen and you know, it's a, it's a useful tool for you know, being able to have communication with people uh, while at the same time, I was not, I was absolutely not using team viewer. The people who do business with me know that I don't even have the time. I make that very clear that I don't even, I don't have the time to really even coach them at all, let alone do anything untold in, in that regard. So, I mean, these are things that people have on their computer, for instance, you know, going, going into my, my, uh, my home computer because something's logged in there when I'm away from my house. It's something that can be useful and wasn't being used for any, any type of wrongdoings at all. Okay. And so for you, you use it for that. And maybe sometimes you're coaching people or I, I, don't, I don't have TeamViewer on my computer. I didn't even know what it was. I do have VPN software. So what, would, what are like, reasons why people in poker would have this that are non-nefarious? For those who are watching who don't really understand, does that make sense? I need you to like. I mean, I'm 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 just really trying to think because I've I've given such little coaching to people like over the past few years because I really have you know been like uh, balancing my time with other stuff. So I've I've always I've made it so clear that you know. It, Hey, if I'm going to back someone, I believe in that person and I'm going to give them the, the proper tools to try to be successful in poker. But as you know, the as anyone who I've dealt with recently can attest, I've really given no time at all to, to coach people outside a game, inside a game, absolutely not. But what I would, I would connect them with other friends or better players and set up sometimes group lessons for them to to join and to work on their game which i think we also need to before we move to the lauren stuff we need to address then the accusations about sergey reichik and what your you know relationship is with him he has since um sent some things that martin zamani had had sent him after um the sort of showered this WSOP event, but do you want to just address um, some of the Sergei yeah, stuff? Absolutely, because Ser Sergei's a good friend of mine, and I think he's a really honest and, and good person. And from my personal, you know, view of him, he's someone that works as hard or harder than anyone inside the, inside the poker world. When When he was playing in high stakes tournaments, every hour that he wasn't playing, he would be studying on the side. So being someone that 
you know, really, I think is such a good person and has put in so much work to the game. You know, I, I've asked Sergi to do coaching for people because I, Sergi, I see as uh, one of the best in the world, a world-class player. And I would ask him to give assistance to, uh, of course, during group sessions that are accounted also that Martin's been a part of, there would be group sessions that would be set up once a week, sometimes with, with Sergi or with Bert Stevens, where these were the guys who were the best players who I staked. And I was trying to get, I would say that goes in line with trying to give the tools to anyone that's close to me or in business with me to be successful. And sometimes even the people that were in those calls were people that I wasn't backing at the time, but just people that I liked and wanted to help them progress in their poker career. Okay, so what do you say to the um, allegations basically that Sergey was ghosting for Zamani? Well, you know, okay, so when you're someone who backs like a lot of people, of course you can't be in every bit of conversation of detail. So on this trip, uh, Martin went, Martin was there and getting coaching from Sergi outside of the game. And on this particular night, and I'm, I'm just saying what Sergi and Martin have said to me, Sergi was out with his, his wife to dinner and Martin sent him a message saying, hey, I'm deep in this tournament, you know, can you come over? And I think they both admitted that that's exactly what happened. But that's like, that's the, at no point did I tell, instruct that that's what he should do, that either of them should do that in this circumstances. I've said the opposite, actually. And, you know, it's something that happened between the two of them. And from all that Martin said, it happened one night and over, it might have happened between three to four hands or so. So, you know, if, if that was something that was, you know, prevalent, that let's say on this trip, if I were to say, OK, this is what I want you to do when you're when you're deep in a tournament, like, you know, call Sergi and have him help you. Then throughout that month, there would have been much more occurrences than just this one occurrence for a few hands. Um, and actually, the week after this hand, uh, Martin actually wound up three handed in a 10K tournament. Um, and with three people left and having a good stack equal to the two other guys, he somehow got all in with seven deuce off suit or seven deuce suited. And it's like at these times you see when people are playing for like a lot of money and, you know, giving no care for your money and just outright playing bad or careless, you know, you start to rethink being in business with these people. So you know, while Martin was Martin was in the same building as Sergi at on this trip for a whole month, and all that he could, all that he said was that Sergi helped him in this one tournament at the end, which he requested him to do. And during the time, I had zero knowledge of and did, didn't ask or request any of that to happen. Okay, and so one of the implications of that conversation also was that Sergey was using real time assistance, which he has said that he was not, um, although he did say that, and I think this is also an interesting conversation that we as a poker community need to probably hash out anyways in some ways, um, was that sort of what real-time assistance is, is something that kind of has shifted in our conversations a lot and what's okay to use and not okay is also kind of um, maybe gray in, in some areas. And so he says he did not use like open up his laptop and use real-time assistance. Um, Zamani claims that he did. Is this something that you've seen, witnessed? Is this something that you would help facilitate? I think a lot of the solvers and things are extremely expensive. If I'm, I, I might be yeah, wrong. So Maybe you can help I, understand. I, I, I've, I've never seen Serge use any of this stuff. I've never heard it being used, that he was using it from any of our close friends that have been around him much more than Martin. He knows that personally I'm completely against doing anything like that. And really, I believe, I believe him 100% when he says that he hasn't used any of this real-time assistance. And like you were saying about these conversations, you know, sites have different ideas of if you can use pre certain pre-flop charts, like while you're playing that, 
you know, it's a gray area that it's okay from this side and it's unaddressed from this side and it's okay from this one. And I'm pretty sure he admitted to using some of these pre-flop charts. And that, that's also something that I had no knowledge of. Not to say that, you know, I'm saying, oh, you know, it was so bad for you to use it. But at the same time, I had no knowledge that he was using any, anything inside the game. And if I did, him and anyone else that's close to me would say that I would have adamantly been against it. And so what was your response when he was kicked out of GG? And for what reason was it made known that he was not allowed to use GG anymore? Really, I didn't believe I, I believe I didn't believe any of it. And I started to ask for more information that I kind of didn't get any more information. And just from the claims that he made, it seems that he asked uh, GG Poker for all the hands that he played because he was sure that he could prove that he wasn't using real-time assistance with the game and the style that he has. So he's never really been, been able, been offered the opportunity to, to clear himself in this regard. And, you know, I, I, I haven't personally seen anything with my own eyes or heard anything from a reliable source that's seen it with their own eyes that he was doing anything like this. Okay. Oh my gosh. There's still, I know we're like deep in this and there's still so many things. <laughs> um, I feel like we, at least I want to flush out some of the stuff with the stables and the satellites and things like that. Um, but I also want to um, tackle some of this Lauren Roberts stuff. And I feel like while we're on the subject of talking about ghosting and that this isn't something that you um, would have approved or encouraged in your stable, Lauren has made a lot of uh, allegations, one of which is you ghosting on her account. And she has said that you told her that she won a poker tournament and that suddenly she had less makeup or something along those lines. I think she said, um, magically, our number went down after she won a tournament. Um, so what would you say to that allegation? And well, she's, she's, she's made another allegation that kind of, that, does, that doesn't connect to each other at all. So, you know, A, she has it here saying that I was ghosting on her account while there's a screenshot of her account losing, I think, 2.2 million on a straight, like, down decline, while at the same time making a claim that I was, whatever word, taking advantage of her being in games and having all my horses, like, kind of hunt her. So I don't understand how, you know, one side she can state that I was playing on her account, but then on the other side I was having people hunt her because she was you know a, a weak player i mean so i think this, the allegation is basically that you were like playing that that you were having your horses take money from her and then also periodically taking money back from your horses yeah but I, that's what i mean it, it goes in line to be something so crazy because you know, inside that, Martin was saying that in these satellites, I would that he he should call like the players with any two cards, and you know th this doesn't make any sense. You're not going to actually make money if you like em employ this strategy. And you know why would I ever want to move money from one side to the other? And that would also mean that I had multiple people involved in you know this complex scenario that really makes no sense. While at the same time, you know, me and Lauren for a period, I, I think it was four years ago, I would say that Lauren was my best friend like four years ago. We were, we were spending a lot of time together. She was, she was nice to offer me a room to stay in her house and she loved poker and we would, we would talk about poker all day and we would have good laughs and we went on multiple trips around the world and I was trying to do the same thing. I was trying to recommend her people that could help enhance her life in terms of, of health and even doctors and try to offer her coaching from people who 
I was taking and I was giving her coaching myself for no, for no incentive. So the other thing is Lauren can't say that I ever had any piece of, of her at any point. So I had no financial gain by her in doing anything. And at the same time, when people make accusations of, you know, Lauren losing money, the thing is Lauren never actually paid the money that she lost. She still owes me a, a huge amount of money that I've, you know, she showed some some messages of me asking for it. And yeah, it's, it's yeah, some, some, you know, life, life is humbling and sometimes you can't understand things because from her side, you know, she's, she sees herself as, you know, this victim that I took advantage of. But in reality, you know, that, that couldn't be less true. I was... You know, I offered her to, to stake Sergi with me at one point because she was losing a lot of money on GG. So I started letting her have action that she never paid for either. So her the amount that she was losing of 2.2 million, I wound up making back for her about 1.5 million of our our stake of Sergi, uh, her buying pieces of me. And she... I, I was also, she would ask me for large amounts of money on party poker. She would ask me at times to pay off her debts from, you know, this game or that game. And she really, she never paid any of the money that she actually lost from, from GG. So I don't understand, you know, the predator approach. And that's something that, you know, it's tough for me to see because I mean, it's so, it's so against my character to take advantage of, of anyone and you know, I'm always so generous and giving and caring and during this time me and Lauren would go on trips I would pay for the rooms she would fly on some private jets with me you know we would go to dinners I would pay for it so I mean even in my poker career when I had no money and I was negative it's like all the people that ever hung around me like I would really pay for their life and if they were struggling through hard times I would loan them money for it so you know it's like it, it it's it's messages that contradict each other continuously in these allegations where it's saying you know here's one thing but here's the you know something that doesn't make have this make any sense so what happened with lauren i mean that's what i think is confusing also so you guys were very close friends and clearly something happened and she is pissed off i mean um you know, I don't really like, I prefer not to talk about, you know, other people really, but, you know, our, our relationship just, it, it changed a little bit. I, I met my girlfriend at that time and maybe in, maybe it was about a month period where I was hanging out at Lauren's house and we were spending all day together, hanging out, laughing, you know, talking poker. And then, you know, she would kind of get jealous of, of my girlfriend, of her not going on certain trips that, you know, she kind of thought that she should have an invite to every trip that I ever went on. And it kind of, it, it, it turned into something that, that started to get much more uncomfortable for me. And at the same, for someone who, you know, I've always paid my own way. So when you say, you know, Lauren and her husband let me stay at their house, it's not like I needed to stay at their house. I just, I liked them and it was a nice, comfortable setting for me and it worked. But at this, then when I started leaving for more and not staying as much, it's like the, the energy and the relationship like started shifting into somewhat of a, of a toxic way that you know, anyone who was privy to our relationship and everything that happened, you know, people like my mom and, clo and close friends that you know, knew about our relationship and everything that was going on, you know, that's the, the unfortunate way that, that things turn. So she seemed to suggest also that you're fairly loose with the accounting within your stable or that it wasn't very clear. Um, what would you say to that? I mean, loose is, I don't know about loose, you know, when you do, when you're doing business with a lot of people, you might not have spread. I'm, I'm not a person, you know, an accountant would have spreadsheets and they would show every single date, every debit or credit that made it to result in the number that it is today. 
me, I would have, I would have a number and I would update it anytime that there was a plus or a minus from that number. And in like that picture where she showed, you know, I, I think it's pretty clear accounting when I sent her a picture of her losses on GG, you know, that's full detailed accounting. And then at the same time, you know, saying that your number is much, much less than that number. I mean, I see that as a cop out of someone not wanting to pay the, the debt that they have, trying to find the reason that, you know, it's not their fault or they didn't do something wrong. So it, I think maybe I, I need to understand better also. Um, I was under the impression when I started seeing um, Lauren Roberts come into these high roller events and things that she was a very wealthy businesswoman, as we've seen plenty of these well, people. Well, that's, that's the same thing that she presented to me. She would make claims to me about having all this money herself personally and that she had, you know, been a successful trader for all this time, but then, you know, as I, as I see now, you know, I think that she would, you know, fabricate truths of her own success and her own ability to gamble and to play. Whereas I know that she lost, she lost a lot of money playing poker. And I know that it wasn't, at least most of it wasn't her money. And I know for a fact that that person who it was her money said that she couldn't play any more poker, said it to other people. So, you know, maybe because she sees her poker, her poker, her poker life as, you know, maybe a failure. Maybe she was expecting to be someone like me. She would even make claims like she was asking if, if I could ask the person who was backing me if they would back her in the same games. And the person who was backing me, they thought that I was the best in the world. And that's why they were backing me for these large buy-in live tournaments. So I think she has a, she created a misconception of her own poker skill. And because her career has been so unsuccessful, I think she's trying to grasp for reasons of why it was unsuccessful other than a poor understanding of her own skill and the games that she was playing in with the bankroll that she had. Okay, so you're saying the allegations from her are false and mostly maybe because of a salty relationship in the end and then some like financial debts potentially that are just never going to be paid. Yeah, I mean, because you know, she posted a bunch of pictures of trying to make me look bad, but there were also just pictures of, of me asking her six months, 12 months, a year and a half after, you know, just if she could pay me some small amount of money, because what happened was, is so I gave Lauren, so Lauren owed me a bunch of money from this GG and I offered, because she was claiming that she had all, all of this money herself, I wanted to do the right thing and help her make some of that back. So she wasn't losing as much. So I offered her a deal to, to be my partner, to back Sergi with me for all the games that he plays. The, the, real, the, the real thing that left a sour taste in my mouth is since she was unable to pay even just the, the $700,000 debt that she has right now, it means that when she owed me $2.2 million, she accepted a deal that she was free rolling me for more millions because it's a similar type of thing. Sergi was playing $25,000, $100,000 tournaments. It would have been very reasonable for him to lose one, two, three million dollars straight, which really was more money than I could afford at the time. But I was banking on, you know, that she, if, if things went wrong, that she would be able to pay what Sergi lost and be able to pay some of the money towards the money that she lost on GG. But since she wasn't even able to, and, pay me smaller amounts in increments and me, you know, trying to be nice and respectful in the ways. It seems like she really had no way to pay any of this money, which, you know, I would argue that in this, in this scenario, she was the one who was a predator. I mean, she was there free rolling me for millions of dollars when I was supposed to be her best friend and living in her house and her stating to me that, 
I was her best friend many times. I mean, honestly, I, I, I see it as in that scenario, really, I, I was the sucker and the one to get taken advantage of. Okay, so I feel like we need to dig a little deeper into some of the things that Zamani said that it seems like some other people might have um, validated. And this you touched on a little bit, but in talking about some of these, the satellites, some of the overlays and talking about putting your team in. And I think the uh, quote was do what's best for the team. Um, can you speak to that and he, does, he, he he scoured through his hall messages between me and him and there's not a single thing that says do what's best for the team so he might have had some understanding of himself personally but I never said to anyone do what's best for the team you know it's it's ev everyone is playing for themselves and their winning and losses is going to affect them so there's, there's definitely no layer that you're expected or supposed to do anything other than play your best game. And then it's up to that person to do whatever that means for them. And in these satellites, like I said earlier, the, guy, the people that he listed are huge losers on the site. And I would say that I was careless about putting people into games that were above their skill level because... It was a time that GG's guarantees were growing and, you know, for big guarantee tournaments to run and to hit the guarantee so that you can hit more, you need satellites to run. So, you know, did I have force of mind start these satellites to make sure that they ran? For sure I did, but absolutely none of them were instructed to do anything wrong in any way from me at any point. And can you speak a little bit to your relationship with Gigi? Um, yeah, I, I would call my, I would say that I started out with Gigi as an ambassador. I translated that deal into something more like an affiliate deal. And I, I would say influenced and advised them on the tournaments that we should run, the guarantees, the satellite schedules for them and help them scale their business from what they were when I started to what they are today. Okay. And so you're departing from them is amicable, was amicable. Well, there, there's a whole thing that says online that I was, you know, dropped as an ambassador or something or fired from GG. There couldn't be, that couldn't be less true of a statement. I'm the one who told GG that it was time that my ambassador deal was over. So it was nothing on their side. They, there was nothing going on wrong in any way that they cut me off. I still have communications with the person who runs that tournament team with the CEO of that company. They asked me advice in, in, in different areas. And there's been no, no bad. There's, there's been nothing bad that's happened and I've never had. Yeah. Like I wasn't dropped as an ambassador. My account on GG poker is still live. I could play with it. It's never been frozen, suspended at any time. And other than Sergi, not another person that I do business with has been frozen or suspended at any time. Okay, so I feel like we just have to ask some questions just to make sure we have like super clear answers. Yes or no, have you ever ghosted on Lauren Roberts or anyone else's account? I mean, you know, I've had a poker career for like 17 years. Have I been, you know, in the same room as someone and been coaching them at poker and, you know, advise them in a hand or two or, or some hands? Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is, is claim that I've never helped anyone while they're playing. You know, it's been a 17-year career. And, you know, like we were saying before, you learn, you learn along the road of, of what's right and what's not but absolutely I never had an operation that was based on 
a scheme of ghosting. And if I were helping people, it would be because I was next to that person at the time and giving them coaching lessons and had no financial incentive or gain for myself. Okay. And why would you, why did you leave Gigi? I just felt, I felt like it was time in my life. Um, you know, I just, yeah, I had other things going and I didn't, I just felt like that was, that's what was right for me. Okay. Um, I feel like I need to open it up to some questions. Does that seem like, yep. I can't even. And you know what? Going. One, one other thing, you know, for anyone just to state, you know, in this interview, it's live. There were no predetermined questions. I didn't ask you to see any of the questions that you were giving me. You know, I showed up as my true and honest self. And, you know, that, that's, that's, what, that's what I am. And that's what's important to me. Okay. So the overall sense is that you have to just answer some questions, um, apparently. So, Zamani, you also have to address this. Is it true if people like didn't eat the right foods or do the things that you told them to do that this is what would it determine whether or not they were dropped in steaks or not? Absolutely not. While, while at the same time, if someone's continuously making poor decisions and being negative in their life, you know, that is something that, of course, you have to consider always because poker is a tough game. And for playing high stakes, you really have to be in the right frame of mind. So, you know, I'm the person who's putting up all the money. So, of course, you're going to have to make assessments if you think that person's actually winning in the game that they want to play because, Everybody in poker, they assess their skill much higher or better than it is. And just because they believe that they're good enough to play in a game doesn't mean that that's true. And I see myself as someone that understands a lot about poker. I'm, I think that I'm the best or one of the best ever. And I think that I'm someone that can make a good assessment of if a person's winning or not in that game. But at the same time, with no horses at any point have I said, you know, you have to do this otherwise, otherwise this is what's happening. And I feel like you have to address the uh, toad poison situation. I didn't want to focus on this, but questions have been asked. I mean, I've, I've never done any, I, I never did any of that with Martin. I've never done any psychedelics or anything with Martin. Uh, at the same time, I recommended him to, you know, I connected him to a person that, that was, um, let's, that was recommended to me by another close friend that knew her for a long time. And this is someone that I recommended Martin to, to go see, to, to try to help him from, you know, just always being unhappy. And, you know, at that point, he's going to go meet with someone and it's, it's his decision if he wants to go forward with that. It's just, you know, it's something like, you know, make a, a recommendation for someone to meet another person. And what happens there is, you know, a, an adult consenting of, if they want to go ahead with it when they're presented with all the information right there. Okay, um, people want to know, was there a romantic element to your relationship with Lauren? And is that part of what's kind of going on publicly now? Um, there was no romantic element, but at the same time, she did make multiple comments and even actions that started making me more and more uncomfortable, which I would guess that from her side, there probably is a feeling of that, of, of romantic relationship that absolutely nothing ever happened like that. Okay. So circling back to the conversation we had about team viewer and VPN and Basically, if you if you aren't coaching people, 
then why do you have team viewer on your laptop but i said it was to get i use it to get into my my home computer i travel around all the time and you know you could have down you you could download something that sits on your computer for a long time i said that you know that's completely untrue that i would use team viewer to do anything untold like in the game and i'll i stick with with that too okay and i guess when you're talking about Zamani and you say like if somebody's a losing player obviously you're not just going to continue to invest in them so if you can see that Lauren is also a losing player, what's the incentive to continue to invest in her? Well, I never actually invested in her. That's the thing. It was all she was playing in these games. I never had any action of any games that she ever played, actually. So I didn't invest in her. It was at the time when I met Lauren, she was playing in million dollar private cash games and losing a lot of money. And I saw her as a person who others were almost certainly taking advantage of her. You know, I saw her poker game was, you know, a much worse one than she saw it. And I wanted to help her out. So her playing in these tournaments on GG were much smaller than the stakes that she was playing at that time. And I was offering her coaching as a friend that she never paid me a dollar to do any coaching. I never took a dollar. I never made or profited a dollar from anything that she was involved in. It, these were, you know, it was, yeah, I, I really liked Lauren at first, you know, and it was me trying to, to help someone who I thought was a friend who was very caring and giving and yeah. And she ended up owing you money for what reason? Well, she because was Because of playing... the Sergei stuff? No, no, no. She actually, she won a lot of money on the Sergey stuff. She might've won like uh, somewhere in the one, a million to a million three range from the action that she free rolled off of Sergey. So all, so she, she lost $2.2 million on GG of which she never paid. Then happened to win a bunch back on this action that I gave her and she didn't pay her remaining balance from the losses that she had. So her balance on GG is not her balance. It's on your balance. Yeah, I would loan. She, she borrowed money from me to play. So all of those losses that people document, she actually, she really didn't lose anything because she didn't pay that money. Okay. Okay. And you will categorically confirm or deny playing on Lauren Roberts' account? Yes, deny. You definitely did not ever do that? No. Okay. Um, let's just go into the chat and see if there's anything else super important that must get done. Of course, my mouse is like messing up. Um, Okay, there's some questions from Twitch. Okay. Um, people want to know, um, do you feel like the I feel like this is something I probably need to. Did you send other people to this shaman person? Uh, yeah, I myself uh, saw her and some of my friends, some of my friends partook on uh, ceremonies that I personally had in Hawaii and Costa Rica. Okay. Um, I 
Yeah, people, man, the Lauren stuff. Okay. So I guess people are really wanting to know um, why you stayed partnered in this situation with Lauren for so long when it's obvious that you were owed money and that she probably wasn't going to pay? Well, you know, she was, she was living in a very expensive house. She was gambling millions of dollars when we met and always claimed to me having a bunch of money. And, you know, someone that was acting as if they were my best friend, I guess I was a bit naive and let it roll longer than I should have. Okay. Um, what, I guess there's questions also about the relationship with Gigi and were you getting rake back or in what way were you incentivized if you were, um, not necessarily an ambassador anymore. I don't really see that as merit to answer. That's like personal business that I have with someone. And yeah, I don't feel like I, there's any reason to answer that. Okay. I, uh, yeah. Do you have other things that you want to share or get out there? Other things you think people mm. are misunderstanding about the situation? No, I mean, it seems to me, you know, everything important to me to discuss has been talked about so far. And I think it makes sense. Um, you know, you mentioned other people from your stable and people who can sort of vouch for you or vouch for the way things are, the way things ran. I don't know if it might make sense at some point to get some of these people talking supporting um do you want do you want you want to set up like a hour interview and we can rotate people in and out for five to ten minutes and talk <laughs> just like uh do like a um chat I, I, would, yeah, I, I, I would i would love to do that actually i would love to present you with all the people that i've done any business with in the past you know years on gg and let them give from their own mouth the experience that they had with me. And if there was, and that I ever asked them to do anything wrong at any point, I would love to do that. All right. And, so, and some, some of it, you know, Mar Martin choose, chose very wisely because he chose not to mention multiple of the most reputable people in the poker industry that I've done business with that are clearly, that clearly have been involved in no type of cheating and you know, he just, he tried his best to make me look as bad as he possibly could. So I would love to, to round up the team and the X team and, you know, let, the, let, let people hear it for themselves from these people and see, see what they believe. And I think, well, I think this is a uncomfortable spot anyways, but um, do you, I, someone asked me, is there any bad blood between you and Doug at all? Or oh, Doug, Doug, Doug clearly did this like out to get me. You know, he did an interview. The way, the way that he posted it in the title, you know, how he did an interview with someone with zero evidence who is completely uncredible and untrusted in the poker industry was clearly just him trying to make an attack at me or you know, gets get some press and he doesn't he doesn't care how he, how he's going to do it so you know i i think i i would say you know he clearly goes against the the moral code of journalism in his podcast that he does and you know i i have no bad feelings towards him towards anyone really i you know i wish everyone the best i hope that they can find happiness in in their life and you know, if it makes them happy to put other people down, they'll probably realize one day, like how, how bad that was actually for their life and how much bad energy that just continued circulating around them for it. So, you know, he did what he did. I've got 
I try to hold on to no bad feelings, no bad thoughts. Um, someone who just, you know, I accept everything that happens and use it as a learning experience. You know, I think that I've got a lot of learning experiences from this process and things that are going on right now. And you know, I just stay to be grateful every day for, you know, for my life, for the blessings that I have and for continuing to, to stay in the light. So I'm basically scrolling through Twitter to find it, if there's, I mean, if there's any questions that I clearly missed, who, um, I'm just trying to see what are the things, is there anything super important that we're missing? In our DMs, dude, and of course my mouse is just like messing up. It's so annoying. And then I think we can just wrap it up, I hope. Okay. Oh, I like this question actually. If you could go back, what, if anything, would you do differently? Honestly, I think about that question a lot sometimes, and I'm really just so grateful for, for the, all the lessons that I've had and the understanding that I'm at at this point in my life. And I think that, you know, if you go back and you change something, it's a ripple effect and it would have a, a different effect on how your life is right now. And I've seen just constant growth and positivity and you know, I feel like I'm I have a very positive influence on so many people's lives and I'm so happy the person that I am and I accept all my all mistakes that I've ever made and you know I look at it as a as a learning experience and something that just makes me stronger and more prepared for the future that's coming so I'm just I'm thankful for for everything good and bad and just grateful for life. Well, this was like undoubtedly a weird, tough spot and um, like a tough subject matter, obviously to tackle. And I did the best I could. I asked the questions that people asked me to ask. So if I missed something obvious or if everyone thinks like this is and a, 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 at least, or whatever, at least I don't no, know. No, that's what I was going to say. No one could say, you know, you started out saying that we have a good relationship, but then, you know, you went at me through the thing. So <laughs> if anyone wants to say that it's a bluff piece, you know, that's, that's nonsense. I'm not sure. I asked the questions that I, that I got <laughs> um, with just a few exceptions. And so um I really appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you wanting to do it live. Um, I was, I thought that was the best way to also answer the questions that people out there had. And so that we had the opportunity to ask all of the things. And um, if, you know, there's any like massive things that we missed, I'm happy to try to, to get to the bottom of it, but um, I tried to cover all of it and really tough subject matter. And I'm, I'm, glad that you came on and came out and and told your side of things and your experience of things and if Lauren Roberts wants to come out also and and jump on or anyone else who wants to add to the conversation or share their experience I think the more transparency and the more conversation the better I hope thank you Bryn just thank another, you Sarah. another Tuesday at the office and exactly. um, enjoy your life. Same to you. Deuces. <laughs>